just little things that you used to think about, oh, like, am I going to have a family, things like that. You just don't know anymore because the cost of living is just like, how do you afford kids? It's literally, daycare is the price of rent these days. So it's, how do you afford just anything anymore? <laughs> do you know what's funny? We ordered lunch, but we ordered lunch to split because that's the yeah. reality. <laughs> yeah, because it's a reality. Like, <laughs> we, it's, gotta, we gotta it's share. They share just about everything, food, rent, taking care of their dogs. Everything is divided in half. I'm going to give you a sentence and if you can finish it. Yeah. So renting in Toronto is. It's literally like challenging people for Mortal Kombat. You just don't know. And I like I'm not even being funny. It's um, it's become a scenario where it's like you have to outbid another person for a spot. So you're seeing a lot more people offering six months rent, a full year, just like crazy bully offers constantly happening because everybody's fighting for the few affordable houses that still exist and the properties that are rent controlled. More and more these days you're seeing kind of buildings like mine being bought by developers and people being told they have to move out and they're being displaced. And it's, again, a situation where what I have right now is affordable. How long will it remain that way? How do you live with that sort of over your head all the time? Like I have a place right now, but, and then the kind of what, what ifs start, right? I think the what ifs have really been the biggest reason why I work full-time and part-time. Um, having kind of those two incomes allows me to put some money in savings. And so that if like things were to go bad in the future, I know I could, I could cover myself for a little bit. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where you, you do the best you can to try to prepare, um, but no amount of preparation is probably enough. When you think about your future here and building a future here, where does your mind kind of go? It seems unrealistic to be able to stay in Toronto and also try to just be able to save for like a house or maybe a new car or anything, right? Um, so like I'm starting to really feel like I might be pushed out of the city and if I have to work within the city and commute, like I have coworkers that commute two hours to get into the city. And I think like living life in general, you have a baseline level of anxiety that you have to work through day to day, whether it's family, personal, health wise. And so now to have this added layer of stress is just, it's a lot. And for something that like when did housing, which is a basic need become a privilege, right? Like of something that you aren't necessarily expected to just have available to you, but now you have to kind of decide, you know, am I going to have my own space? Am I going to have dogs? Am I going to have, you know, what I want in life? Or am I just going to have a room where I live in, right? It's, yeah, it's scary. I'm here right now for work and I'm trying to get out. And I've only been here for a year and a half. At 44, she always thought she'd be further along. She knows she's lucky compared to many. While she makes good money, her work is freelance, so there's no guarantees. I mean, I'm working 70 to 80 hour weeks, easy. And it's just like at the end of the month, there's like literally nothing left. And you're like, what the hell? Like, how is this even possible? It's not that I'm really living over my means with having a place and some food and a car. Her building is older, so covered by rent control, but she thinks the government should go even further and introduce rent caps. And my rent has doubled in the last 10 years. So when are we, like, it's, it's all noble thinking that we're buying, uh, building more units and that we're increasing the housing market and whatnot. Well, there's no point to it if the rent is like $3,000 for these units. Like there needs to be a cap, there needs to be uh, some sort of uh, support for people that don't have that kind of money. There's a gap between how uh, inviting Canada looks from the outside and how difficult it is to 
get your foot inside, especially into the city when you, once you come. And you find a lot of things stacked against newcomers, and it's getting worse. When Silo Kura arrived in Toronto from Turkey in 2019, he says it was tough convincing landlords to rent his family of three a unit. Because especially as a newcomer, you have no presence here. You don't have bank accounts. Most often you don't have employment letters, any of that, those, uh, the, the holy grail that they ask, you know, employment letter, pay stub, and you know, credit, credit scores. Right now people are paying 12 months up front of rent, and that just takes thousands, like tens of thousands away of their saving. If we had to do that, that would have taken away almost three quarters of the money that we could bring to Canada when we first came here. And while they're happy now in Midtown, their hope is one day to have more space. It's kind of funny when you're living in the neighborhood, but you know you're never going to be able to afford a place here. For now, the focus is making ends meet and paying rent. Since rent and other things are like fixed expenses are so much such a big part of our budget, we're trying to you know, scrimp and save on other things. Can we afford a, tri a trip back home? My wife wanted to do that, but then she t took a look at the uh, plane tickets and said, is it worth paying a month's rent? Because it's always, it always boils down to that. When you're thinking of an expense that is slightly big, you always think it's a month's rent or it's like two months rent. It's become currency. A delicate balance he and so many other renters in the city are constantly weighing. Shannon Martin, CBC News, Toronto.